Blood Sport. I'm in love with you. I want him to come live in this match. One gladiator has that same trident spear. Your guest inspires me. Personate a noble? Get out! Be honest now. Welcome to History Bites, a show that views our past through the all-seeing eye of the television camera. I'm Rick Green. As the world moves from the second millennium and into the third, we're going to take a look back at the end of the first. If you think people are overreacting to Y2K, wait till you hear what went on the first time around. On December 31st, in the year of our Lord, 999, many Europeans braced for the apocalypse. The year 1000 would bring Judgment Day. There was fear and loathing, joy and hope, sin and salvation. And that makes great television. So, let's imagine TV had been around back then, and let's go channel surfing as everyone prepares to end their broadcasting schedule permanently. Get ready to party like it's 9.99. It's the Y1K Rockin' New Year's Eve with your host, Dick the Clark. Plus the greatest lineup of guests in the millennium, including Pope Sylvester II. The musical stylings of boys to monks in their final world appearance. Everyone's favorite jester, Bobo Buffoon. Plus special surprise guests. And now, here he is, your host for the final festivities, Dick the Clark. Hello, everyone. Great to be here. Can't wait to see where we are next. <laughs> Time is running out. Just kidding. Folks, it's a real honorable honor to be here for the Y1K Rockin' New Year's Eve. The grand finale, the apocalypse now. We have an all-star lineup of who's who, which will soon be who was. <laughs> and we have a surprise finish for this evening because no one knows how it's going to end, but we asked some famous celebrities how they think the end will come. Here's what they told us. Personally, I, I think the world is gonna turn to ash and only the righteous will be taken up to heaven. Rock on. Hi, this is Boleslav the Brave, King of Poland. I believe we're all going to go down in a giant earthquake. And I just want to say to you kids, have fun during the apocalypse, but don't overdo it and stay Christian. This is uh, Kenny Three of Scotland and uh, you're listening to the end of the world on uh, EBC. Uh, I think the earth may be consumed by great monsters. Oh, we may just deforest it all and use up all its resources. I don't believe the end of the world will come from any angels or monsters. I believe it will come from me. Death to the infidels! And Happy New Year. This is King Olaf of Norway on Dick the Clark's Rockin' New Year's Eve. I know my end of the world includes the Great Whore of Babylon. Does yours? I'm going to heaven. You're going to hell. Hey, guys. I'm ready for Armageddon. That's right. My words about the end of the world are over. I've just joined the Flatulence. The what? It's a group of superheroes who save the world through the power of their intestinal gases. As soon as I heard about them, I knew I had what it takes. Listen. <coughs> See? And when I joined, they gave me this whip. You idiot, Cartman. It's not flatulence. It's flagellants. They're those nuts who get whipped to atone for the sins of humanity. You guys don't scare me. You're just jealous of my success. Eric the Cartman is not whipped. <laughs> what does my kitty have to do with it? <laughs> Those are the current weather conditions across the continent. The outlook for tomorrow. For tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> we, we can expect. Oh, no, it's not fair. I was good. I was really good. What are you doing? It's New Year's Eve. <laughs> Jerry, you have the last one. And you're going to a party? Yeah. Mike the Barber is having one? It's BYOB, bring your own ball! How can you even think about something like that when the apocalypse is almost upon us? Apocalypse? Now? <laughs> Come on, Jerry. You don't really believe all that stuff, do you? Of course. All the signs are there. Look at the corruption of the clergy. Ah, come on. They've always been corrupt. It seems like every pope these days is either getting seduced or assassinated. Okay. What about St. Anthony's fire? When his house burned down? No! The plague! Spreading rye bread! 
Yeah, I can kill a man in a day. Hmm. I think this whole thing is being blown way out of proportion. <laughs> what about the meteorites? The earthquakes? The cannibalism in the streets? People gotta eat something. When they're too scared to eat rye bread? <laughs> we should all be face down on the ground begging for forgiveness. All right. <laughs> Let's say it is the end of the world. I could beg forgiveness for my sins from now to the next millennium, and I still wouldn't have it covered. <laughs> so the way I see it, you can spend your last few potential hours kissing the freezing cold floor of the church, or sipping New Year's Eve mead with Brenda the Perky. Brenda the Perky's going? And she's bringing her sister, Lisa the Deeply Cleave. <laughs> hey, where'd you get that party hat? Huh? I stole it. I figured, what the hey? It's the end! <laughs> Good evening, I'm Ted Kerfuffle, and tonight it's the end of the world as we know it. First, I am joined by the man who is surely the primary authority on all things millennial and Armageddonish, the recently appointed Pope Sylvester II. Sir, you are considered a progressive pope, one of the most educated minds on the continent. What can we look forward to? Well, Ted, there'll be good and bad. In fact, good and bad will be battling each other tonight. Uh, on our side, we'll have a fighting force of 10,000 angels, of heaven's finest, there to serve and protect. And the side of evil will have its A-team in the lineup, the, the Antichrist, the seven-headed dragon of the apocalypse, and the great whore of Babylon. Now, I'm <laughs> guessing that she'll be quite a sight. I <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the, the downside, of course, is that this battle will be fought on, on a field of blood. Ours. And as to who will win, uh, I think you know who I'm pulling for. Uh, but I'm afraid it may come down to traction because a field of blood is going to be awfully slippery. Footwear should play a big part in this. Will the end be sudden or will it be more gradual? Well, you know, that depends on your point of view. If, if you happen to be gazing up at the night sky and uh, you haven't already been slayed by the great dragon, you'll gradually see that the moon may appear to get bigger and bigger before uh, it eventually lands on you and, and crushes you like, um, well, so much fish paste. Uh, if, however, you just happen to be going about your nightly business, oblivious to the impending disaster, you'll notice that the sky is uh, going to get suddenly completely white and very quick. <laughs> I see. Everyone's had 999 years to prepare for the end of the world. So we're out here asking folks what they've planned for this, their final evening. My friends and me, right? We're going to the church and we're gonna like, like huddle in the darkness, right? And like, like begging for forgiveness. <laughs> Is adultery still adultery if you're not like an adult? Because while you people are all running around screaming and such like, I'll be safe and sound in my apocalypse shelter. Yeah. Oh crap! Is that tonight? Just my luck. I have to work the late shift. Couldn't you just call in sick? Oh, sure, they'd fire my butt just like that. Darn leprosy. I'll, I'll be protected by five solid inches of wood and dung. <laughs> Packing. Why do I always wait till the last minute? You know I'm going to forget something. Well, I'm going to be putting on my Sunday best and getting all dressed up for God. Well, I'm not putting on my Sunday best. I gave it all away. The Bible says it's pretty near impossible for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. It does? Oh yes, Matthew chapter 19, verse 24. Our abbot never told us about that. The abbot who lives in the abbey on the hill with the wine cellar? The abbot with the slaves to do all his gardening? Yes. Oh dear. Say, do you have any idea how long an apocalypse lasts? Oh, well, the Great Flood took 40 days and 40 nights. Flood? I gotta get started on the treehouse. Some say that as midnight approached on December 31st, 999, thousands of pilgrims gathered in St. Peter's in Rome, so they'd be at ground zero when God arrived. But not everyone in Europe was worried, because a lot of people, especially out in the boonies, had no idea what day it was, or what year or what country they lived in. Hey, they didn't call them the Dark Ages for nothing.
I just want to apologize to Jurgen's mom and Knut's mom and Olaf's mom and Wiglaf's mom. That's what the shield and helmet's there for, to prevent these kinds of injuries. These, uh, what do you call them? Decapitations. Yeah! Hey, have you looked around lately? Go ahead. I'll wait! To your right, you have your wife and kids, and on your left, you have your other wife and her kids. Is something wrong with this picture? Of course! You got two wives, and you're allowed four! So don't shortchange your harem! Double your pleasure with some slave girls. Just call the number on the screen and you can talk with one of these beautiful slave girls. Hi, my name is Shira and I'm looking for a guy who's into poetry and romance but doesn't mind signing up for a jihad of love once the lights go down. Hi, my name is Asma and I've got a thing for Berbers. I am looking for a man from La Mancha to get savage with. Hey, do you have a thing for burpers too? Uh... No, Berbers, nomads from the Sahara. Hi, I'm a bee and I'm a eunuch. I'm looking for a man, well, a man who likes eunuchs. I like pottery and sailing, but realistically, the most important quality in my man is it he likes eunuchs. He has to like eunuchs. So what are you waiting for? If you're a more and you want more, pick up the phone and call now. Now it appears the end is at hand. Do you think it's made it more difficult to convert people to your faith when they realize it's all about to end? Like trying to talk people into going for a boat ride on a sinking ship? Oh, no, no, not at all, Ted. No, the ship is sinking and we're offering a ride on the only lifeboat. See, if anything, people are more eager than ever to sign up. Uh, statistics don't lie. Olaf Trygvason, uh, Boleslav the Brave of Poland, uh, King Vladimir of the Rus, boy, the list goes on and on. And of course, the fact that these leaders have allowed their people to choose between these conversions and uh, death, that hasn't hurt either. Coming up. Is your castle Y1K compliant? Welcome back to the History Bites Y1K special. Today, with our access to hundreds of news sources, it's hard to appreciate just how little most average folks knew in the Middle Ages. Rumors, legends, tales. No news meant good news, or it meant everyone over there had died of some kind of plague there was little understanding of what went on in the next county, let alone the other side of the world. Little understanding and even less tolerance. I'm here where the end of the world is expected to hit first, on the shores of New Zealand. As the sun rises, or if it doesn't rise, or if the moon falls, it should herald the beginning of the end. It's ironic that the people here have no inkling that the end is nigh, the people here are Polynesians, immigrants who have conquered this ocean from Hawaii and the Easter Islands, and earlier this year to right here in New Zealand. Of course, with the world coming to an end, it's all for naught. Food for thought. Thank you, Pope Sylvester. When we return, scholars and alchemists have their say. Plus, we'll talk to ordinary citizens who were unaware of the significance of today's date. Or were unaware of today's date. Forbidden City in Peking, 
And over the past few days since our arrival, we've discovered the citizens of this huge advanced nation are woefully unprepared for Y1K. These industrious people don't even know it's the year 1000. For some reason, they think it's the year of the rat. <laughs> Whereas back in good old Europe, every year is the year of the rat. Not to mention the rat-borne diseases. <laughs> and then it's off to old London town for the European Torture Championships with top torturers from around Europe competing for confessions, yes. And then we have the Danish Viking Marching Band and Precision Looting Team who will be showing off their skills on an unsuspecting town in Ireland. In India, a land of competing kingdoms and empires, the people are Buddhist and Hindu, the general feeling here is that life and the universe work in cycles and everything, is, as far as I can make out even souls, are recycled. One big cosmic blue box, so these people are in for a shock and I can't wait to see the look on their faces. Over to Morris in Spain. Thanks, Patrick. Well, as you can hear behind me, all is silent now here in Spain, but in just a few minutes, the rain that falls mainly in the plain will be flooding the cities. Most of the Moors here believe in something called Islam, so they're pretty much unprepared for the destruction and slaughter that God, in his love and mercy, will soon be sending to them. Uh, let's go now to the undiscovered country with the Mayans. Morris, the Mayan people here seem to be under the impression that the end can be forestalled, but only through sacrifice. Now, I'm not sure what kind of sacrifice is involved, whether it's animals or what... Hello? What? Can I help you? Oh, oh my God! We think you'll find that St. Anthony's meat is a little different from the rest. We use the finest honey. Oh, honey! Made strong honey. and smooth honey. with a dozen <laughs> secret herbs. Oh. You are so smooth. You are so sweet. So smooth on my lips. Honey, I love you. St. Anthony's Mead. It's the mead that could change your life. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're good, honey. What happened here? What happened here? Vikings happened here, man. Vikings! Can you describe it? Well, I don't know, you know, I was just working out back harvesting and uh, Dave runs up my buddy and he goes, Viking boats! Viking boats, man! I'm like, cool, is that raiders or traders? Because, you know, you can tell by the kind of boat they're sailing in, right? So he goes, traders, man! And I said, cool, them canors, you know, they have big wide boat, lots of stuff on them. Them canors got some good stuff too, like them little suits. Oh yeah, those are good. Yeah, you just put them. some uh, gold in them and heat them up, you know. <laughs> so anyway, so like I'm, I'm going down there to the shore to trade with them, and they're like dragon ships, you man. No. Yeah, big dragon ships, and I'm like, whoa! Oh, that idiot Dave couldn't tell the difference between a dragon ship and a canor. Like, since when does a trading ship have big battle shields up and the big dragon on its bow, you know, man? <laughs> yeah, serves Dave right, man. Serves him right for what? Serves him right for what they did to him, man. I mean, look, and Dave, Dave's all over here, man. His legs over there, his arms over there. One reason Europe was not totally awash in apocalyptic panic on New Year's Eve of 999 was because not all Christians believed the same things, just like today. And of course, not everyone was Christian. There were Muslims, Jews, and various pagan faiths. For example, some Vikings had converted to Christianity, but many Scandinavians still hankered for that good old time Valhalla. The Arne Black Tooth of Bergen has passed away. Unfortunately, he died in bed. It's a terrible way for a God's fearing warrior to die. When I think of all the times he could have died in battle like he wanted, I knew Bjarne was terrified of dying in bed. Not just because it meant he wouldn't go to the heavenly Valhalla, because he would be taken to the depths of the earth to Niflheim and to be carried to that icy and fog-shrouded place in a boat made of toenail clippings. That's what Bjarne feared most, the toenail boat to Niflheim. Now, some may try to comfort themselves by saying, maybe Niflheim is just a myth. Maybe there is no toenail boat, but friends, we know in our hearts there is. That's, uh, that's very funny. <laughs> that's yeah. a funny
for anyone. That's know, a good. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Riddle Talk. And we have Gadwina on the line with a question. Go ahead, Gadwina. Uh, hi. Yes, Gadwina, you're live on Riddle Talk. Your question, please. Okay, so, like, I heard this riddle, but I, I don't know it. It's a real short one. It's just about water becoming bone. Ah, uh, yes. We get that one quite a bit here. Yeah. Short riddle, short answer. Ice. Uh, ice doesn't have bones. No, no, no. Yeah, see, uh, the ice is the bone. See, the water becomes hard, like a bone. So the answer is ice. That's really stupid. Thanks for calling, short and sweet. Ice doesn't have bones. No, some people really don't get that one. Probably from Iceland. Slaving <laughs> away in the kitchen. That's why we have slaves. Now I'd like to show you how to use some of the leftover carcass to make marvelous drinking vessels for the men of your household. A lot of men love to gulp back their mead out of their favorite drinking horn. The problem is that when he's drunk, he may have difficulty making his horn stand up. That's why beakers made out of animal claws make so much sense. After all, they keep the animal from falling over, so they're perfect around drunken Vikings. Now I have a load of bull feet here. Heard the accusations against Osbert. Yes, indeed, Edith. It was a powerful opening statement with the prosecution describing eyewitness accounts of how Osbert murdered his wife, Hilda, and her lover, Wymond, using agricultural implements. And then he fled the scene shouting, I killed her, I killed her, I killed them both, but good. And of course, with the blood on his... And we are now awaiting the statements from the defense in this, what many are calling the trial of the year, perhaps even... The millennium. It's a fascinating, fascinating case. Oh, and I've, I've just received word that the defense is now making its presentation. So we are now going live to the 100 court. We've all heard the lurid description of the crime, but our client Osbert has sworn an oath that he didn't do it. And he has 20 oath helpers who swear his oath is pure and true. Well, that's the case for the defense. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Osbert has sworn his innocence, and he has oath helpers who support him, so looks like he's in the clear. That's it for the trial? Well, he's innocent. He swore he was, so he's... I know a lot of people are going to have trouble with this verdict, especially those who saw him do it. Sure. But Edith, the fact is that in our legal system, you're presumed innocent as long as enough other people say you are. Somehow, Osbert got the number of oath helpers he needed. So, justice comes down to a popularity contest? Yeah. Stay tuned to History Bites as we ring out the year 999 medieval style with 50 channels, 7 seals, and a beast numbered 666, which is 999 upside down. Think about it. At the turn of the first millennium, the church was working to suppress or absorb pagan beliefs, ranging from magic charms to spirits to astrology, and of course, pagan festivals that eventually evolved into Christmas and Easter. Stevie Wonder sang, when you believe in things that you don't understand and you suffer, superstition is the way. Well, in the 10th century, there was little understanding, but plenty of suffering, and superstition was definitely the way. Coming up next from China, something new called gunpowder. Yes, gunpowder. And now I'd like to introduce the lady with whom I'll be sharing the end of the world, my wife, Lady J. Here she is. Isn't she lovely? Well, are you excited, Lady J? Oh, who wouldn't be, honey? You know, can I just say one thing? Sure. This show has been great so far. Yes, it has. And I have to say, I like the lepers. <laughs> well, do you all like magic? Do you like the black magic? Well, then get ready for the satanic magic of David Cooperfield as he attempts to turn lead into gold. One of the best opportunities to organize your household the way you want it and get your farm running efficiently is if your husband is killed while he's away on a raiding party. Many of my friends are widows and they love it. 
I like riddles as much as the next monk, but some of these are getting out of hand. I heard this one the other day about this object, and these women touch it, and it swells up, and it becomes hard. Yeah, right, right, right. I think I know the riddle that you mean. Well, it's a very rude riddle. No, it isn't. I think we all know what it's supposed to be. No, it isn't. The answer's bread. No, because women touch it. And it grows. Oh, oh, oh. And now we're going to broach another organizational topic, brooches. These bronze brooches can hold all your daily needs. Sure, they're decorative and they hold up your tunic, but they're also a Viking woman's personal organizer. Who needs pockets when you have brooches? You can clip your keys, combs, curlers, scissors, or what have you, right to your brooch. But I prefer to go that little step further and use them as a filing cabinet, tool rack, and cutlery drawer. Quite a matchup. Yeah, I tell you, that's why this game is catching on like crazy. Defense, offense, those knights, eh? Duking it out. And him chasing them around the castle and all those peasant guys, uh, what do you call them? Prawns. Prawns? Gee, sounds like uh, something you eat. Anyway, it was a good match. It was pretty touch and go there when the king almost got it. And then the queen got killed off there. And then when that bishop was cornered and the other bishop came in like, like, that, like that there, yeah, that was a great game of chess, eh? What's the secret to winning at the chessboard? That's simple. Check, check, check them right into the boards. But even amongst the devout faithful, there are many who believe the end of the world is not at hand. This silent majority has its own plans, and these plans involve the future. But what kind of future? Over the next five or ten years, we're going to see amazing developments in alchemy. Okay, you're, like you're going to see like a lot of chaos. The chaos. Because of the Y1K rollover thing? Yeah, because like I mean, we're we're going from a three-digit year to like a four-digit yeah, four. Four year, yeah. and like ruins have to be updated, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. right. We have to put ones in front of every year we write or yeah, or, or carve, right? Because it's it's gonna cause chaos. 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 Yeah. And priests will harness the power of miracles, so we can use them for plowing the fields or killing bad folks. So my advice is like stock up on things to eat and yeah, have candles, some munchies, have mm -hmm. candles for lighting and, and mm -hmm. like wood for heating light. Like, so right? Yeah. Of course that's like our advice every day. Yeah. There's a lot of theories about why people are drawn to doomsday cults and the idea of the imminent end of the world. But back in the year 999, there was an extra reason to look forward to the coming of a glorious afterlife. Because this life was so relentlessly awful. Are you stuck in a rut? Your serfdom got you down? Is it hard to move up the feudal system? You need to enroll in the Correspondence School of Siege. You need to learn how to get what isn't yours, but will be yours once it's yours. It's not your fair share, but it will be. At the Correspondence School of Laying a Siege, you'll learn our Get Rich Slow method. Learn step by step with the proven system of starve em and carve em, uh -huh. the same system that's conquered castles from Lusignan to Mirabeau. I didn't know the difference between catapult and catatonic. Now I'm a certified ballista operator, and I'm laying more than just sieges. So, siege the day and get some stuff. You'll study cutting edge battle tactics that are as easy as one, <laughs> two, three. So call the Correspondent School of Laying a Siege and get the skills you need. Next time your Baron calls you to arms, you'll be ready. Call now. Have credit card at Farm Animals and Crops Departed with ready. Okay, welcome back to the Rural Peasant. Now we're talking about planning for retirement with Anne from Bordeaux. Now she wonders if she should think about having more children. How many children do you have, Anne? Twelve. Half a mo now. One died last week. Eleven now. <laughs> Make that ten. Well, you know, uh, ten's still pretty good. A lot of people don't even have that many. <laughs> Any under fours? Oh, yes, three little ones. Cute little blight. There's no smallpox scars yet. Well, odds are is that one of them is going to survive to adulthood. 
So you're doing pretty good with ten kids. Yeah. Uh, nine now. Well, nine's a, a very lucky number, and uh, well, well, what I'm saying to you is that that with nine kids, you. Really... Uh, uh, oh, ten. Ten. I just gave birth. Oh, congratulations. Uh, what I'm saying to you is that those ten children really. Uh, Ah, oh, right. Well, this is what I'm saying. Those 11 children are your insurance policy for the future, right? Huh. When you're old, you'll be glad of them. That's very true. Because I often worry what's going to happen when I get older. And, oh, mercy, I'm feeling all wobbly. Oh, that's not right. Oh, oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello? Ann? Ann? Any, any, any of you there? Oh, right. Well, uh, seem to have lost that one. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go to our next caller. Agnes, from by the bend in the river, you go ahead. To the front of the tower here. Well, Bob, we thought we'd compliment the massive stonework in the tower by putting in a dramatic bay window. Wow. It's going to be one of the largest windows in the region. Mm -hmm. It is so large, it had to be made by mounting four sheets of glass together. Wow. This is it here. Let's... Wow, that is impressive. Hmm. You need a trepanning like you need another hole in the head. Well, if you say so. I do. To the golden age where... People will live to be 40, maybe even 50. Childbirth will be safe and routine. Thanks to special prayers and herbs. Well, yes, there'll be an apocalypse, of course, but I think it will be fairly localized. And after the apocalypse, I think we'll see some kind of, some kind of lion-lamb coalition. There'll be so much more food. More people will survive the famines. Now, on the military front, we'll see swords being modified for use as plowshares. And I'll tell you, if you think a sword is a dangerous weapon, wait till you see a trained soldier swinging a plow around. When History Bites returns, you've got mail. Chain mail. The more you learn about medieval life, the more you appreciate democracy, freedom, and human rights. Feudal society was divided into the nobles and church who shared the power and the 95% of the population who did the backbreaking labor. For most people, the feudal system was futile, but at least it was a system. Thank you, church and nobles. You give us the guidance we need. You give us land to farm and let us keep some of the food we grow there. You give us spiritual guidance, in Latin. In wartime, you help us fight for our land. In peacetime, you give us laws. You even help us calculate how much tax we owe you. Thank you, church and nobles, for keeping us where we are, wherever that is. This has been a paid commercial announcement from the Church and Nobles of England. You are on record as saying that Y1K is not going to be a problem. That's right. You see, what we're seeing is a huge overreaction propagated by the media and the church. We've known about this for a long time and they've taken the necessary steps. We're converting all our religious drives to something more Y1K compatible, <laughs> the uh, New Testament. This first item is the clapper. Isn't it beautifully crafted, Doug? That's right, Sonia. Folks, if you know a leper or if you live in a village where lepers pass through, you can't afford to let this opportunity go by. Have a look at that. That is solid oak. Yeah. The harder the wood, the louder the clap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Doug, let me tell you, I've tried this one and boy, is it a banger. Folks, we know that you'll probably recognize the leper's black cloak and tall scarlet hat, but isn't it comforting having that extra protection in case your kids stray away from the hut? When a leper has a clapper, it sends a message loud and clear, even to the youngsters. It just shouts, stay the hell away from me. I'm a diseased freak who even the church views as the living dead. Now, isn't that extra protection worth three pence? 
Huh? <laughs> <laughs> For sure, Doug. Now, if you are a leper and you are watching from one of the few buildings that you are legally allowed to enter, don't forget about the special feature of the clapper. It fastens to your pants so that you only need to use one hand to use it. Well, that is just terrific, especially if you only got one hand. <laughs> <laughs> what do you foresee for humanity in this new millennium? Well, the way things are going, I see a complete conquest by one of the world's superpowers. I would be very surprised if a thousand years from now, every person on Earth is not either a, a Viking or a Moor. I'd like to ask James the Alchemist, if I may, what sort of technical preparation should people be making for midnight tonight? I suspect that the moon will come crashing down tonight. We've already had reports of bits of it falling on Germany as meteorites, and of course, the moon's surface has holes all over it. I am advising people to watch carefully as the moon plummets to the earth and try to line yourself up with one of these holes as it makes impact. That way, you'll be safe inside your own little moon cave. And a helmet wouldn't hurt either. Oh, I am stuck on leeches, cause leeches stuck on me. This must be a very exciting time for you, King Stephen. It certainly is, Lisa. What with all that's happening, you know, with me being named king, and of course, my country's imminent acceptance into the great religion of Christianity by the Pope himself, and of course, hey, the end of the world. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> Why did you feel that Hungary needed to go through so much change? Well, the day of the marauding mag your horseman is over. If we didn't learn our lesson at Leckfield, we certainly did at Arcadiopolis. <laughs> Ar you know, those, you know, the battles, you know, against the Byzantines? We lost. Uh, anyway, like true Hungarians, hey, we took it out on our leader. I guess Prince Sovetsyov was wishing he hadn't asked for that bowl cut. <laughs> bowl cut. Bowl. See, because they cut off his skull and they used it as a drinking bowl. The, the... Throughout history, there have been many fake scares. Time and again, someone has predicted the end is at hand, as is foretold. And time and again, nothing. What makes this different? Those others were all the result of religious scaremongering by people who were just looking to profit from the panic. This one's for real. As I explained in my book, Armageddon it on. Now, nobody likes to think about cannibalism, especially in this day and age. But let's be honest, one crop failure, one good famine, and we know what happens. Will there be a great noise? No question. If not from the moon falling, there'll be a loud reaction from the people it's landing on. I want to live the good life. I want to have my own fire. You got mail. Hey, buddy, I got mail. Now you peasants will say all oh, hail. Now I'm a knight and all I do is fight. Cause these days, baby, mine is right. Hey, hey, baby, we got mail. Cause we're way up on the social scale It's a pyramid of power with the king at the top And you serfs at the bottom holding it up Feudalism is a two-way street We fight for your vassals, you make sure we Give you a fight and you can be my farmer And I'll be your knight in chainmail armor Hey girl, I got mail my helmet fits me like an iron pail Got me a shield and a great big sword So kneel down, girl, that makes me your lord Hey, peasants, we got mail So bring us food and plenty of ale Serving us is what you vassals do And if you don't, we'll get medieval on you Feudalism is a two-way street And you can be my farmer And I'll be your knight in chainmail armor Feudalism is a two-way street We give you some land, you make sure we I'll protect you, my serfs and vassals Unless things go bad, then I'll hide in my castle
When we return, we'll find out if the world really did end in the year 1000. No peeking. On the last day of the year 999, some folks apparently braced for the wrath of God. Others apparently awaited the arrival of a glorious new age. I say apparently because there are stories of panic, but not a lot of hard evidence. Of course, in the Dark Ages, there was little hard evidence of anything. And when nothing is certain, everything is possible. Well, thanks to the Gregorians for that great rendition of Old Lang Syne. Yes. Well, it's almost midnight. Almost there. Are you excited, Lady Jane? Dick, I never knew I could feel such dread. But Lady Jane, it's the end, Judgment Day. If we're going to heaven. Yes, it's less than uh, two minutes. Let's check in with our correspondents. Any sign of the end there, folks? Gisela. Dick, for a moment here, it looked as if the people were being turned to ash as punishment. But as it turns out, they just have very dark skin. So who knows what their punishment will be? Uh, yes, Dick, uh, the uh, four horsemen are approaching and uh, they have taken the form of, 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 of mighty serpents hanging from the front of, of, of huge thundering horses. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, it appears these are actually something called uh, elephants. Here in Spain, these moors will soon be no more. And, oh, wait, here it comes. Yes, yes, oh, the, this is, this is, no, 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 oh, okay, this, this is it now. I, I can see, no, th those are stars. Uh, okay, no, okay, yes, yes it is. No, no, nothing. Oh my, oh my God! Well, it looks like the end is already hit in the land of the mites. 30 seconds to go and then we are off to heaven. Honey, I, I don't think I'm going. Uh, you see, I, I, um... What do you mean, honey? Well, I haven't exactly been free of sin. <laughs> what? Remember that knight who stayed with us last month? Oh. Oh. See ya. Here we go, folks. Ten. Nine. Eight. Oh, no. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. There's a light. I see a light. They said there would be a light. Have you seen anything? What a rip! This is a rip. Well, let's go to St. Peter's Cathedral. Any casualties there? Uh, yes, Dick. Uh, three or four people have died of fright. Uh, everyone else is uh, doing fine. Relieved that the end of the world did not come, uh, except for the really pious people who are cheesed off, as you can hear it. You see what I mean, Dick? I think it uh, might be the end of the world for the Pope. I think. Lady, we're in a church for God's sake. It's a crazy woman. I was like praying and praying, right? And, like, Thinking good thoughts and stuff, right? And the world didn't end. <gasps> so like, I saved everyone, right? Like, like I saved the world. Bummer, man. Don't you get it? This is the afterlife. We were here all along. In truth, the Lord has shown us our folly. God be praised. Oh, great, and I called in sick. Now what am I gonna do? Well, I knew nothing would happen. I did. I just built this shelter to hide from the regular disasters like the forest fires and the wolves and the, the Viking attacks and the... <coughs> oh, good. I'm so lucky. I've got something. <coughs> this Y1K was a complete bust. <laughs> My abbot has some explaining to do. I gave away everything I have to the poor. Well, when the year 1000 arrived without the cities collapsing and vanishing, medieval Europeans went back to their normal routine, struggling to survive. Until the next Armageddon scare in 1033 AD on the thousandth anniversary of Christ's death. 
And there have been many more scares since then, from large-scale panics to small suicide cults. Even at the end of the world, history repeats itself, and afterwards, history marches on, proving if you succumb to panic, history bites. It's me like an iron pail. Got me a shield and a great big sword. So kneel down, girl, that makes me your lord. Hey, peasants, we got mail. So bring us food and plenty of ale. Serving us is what your vassals do. And if you don't, we'll get medieval on you. Feudalism is a two way street. And you can be my farmer And I'll be your knight in chainmail armor Feudalism is a two-way street We give you some land, you make sure we I'll protect you, my serfs and vassals and